Okay, I guess this is going to be the final one this morning before I try to hit some, uh, hit some sleep at this point over here. It's, uh... Oh, damn, you're almost right o'clock in the morning. It's about 2.49. Coming up on 2.50 in the morning. It's still the 31st of July, 2023, Monday. Uh, the diary of the griever named John Weaver, which would be me. Yeah. Emotional roller coasters. I've had them over the past few weeks. I've had the triggers. I've also come across memories that uh, had disturbed me a little bit this morning. About almost an hour and a half ago before I started doing my ranting and ravings on here like a lunatic. I was looking at memories of people a place that I worked at and I thought I liked the people I liked, respected, cared about, and then felt like afterwards it became harder and harder to deal with it. It became harder to deal with a particular company that damn near killed me. People who wore the uniform. There was a few people actually directly involved in it. In a department that should have been better, but it wasn't. I struggled. Until they finally decided they are going to kick my ass out of there because they can't deal with me. One way or another. I'm not productive enough. I argue too much. Or whatever the experiences or reasons they gave out. Basically, they got sick and tired of me. I guess I got sick and tired of them too, in a way. Trying to kill me, whitewash the damn thing, and then get written to me one way or another. And how was I supposed to feel about the people that I actually worked with? Did they actually cared enough? Did they mattered enough? Stay in a place long enough, you're thinking building another family in there that actually gives a shit about you, but it's just a collection of strangers. Acquaintances. You share experiences on the floor, but you never invited them home with you or to their home to really see how things are going. We just brought our lives into a workplace, and that was about it. So that's the only thing you have is just them. Hurt like hell, I'll tell you that much. And I've worked in different places, a lot of places that just the people were there, paycheck. All the form a little bit of relationships on the floor, but that's about it. That's the only th that's the only thing they wanna, wanted to do. Stay at a job long enough, and you thought you'd build up relationships a little bit. Just, uh, yeah. Be nice to talk to people with different viewpoints, different histories, and I may or may not be more connected to you. And unfortunately, they became less connected. Right after the tire hit, and I got kicked out of Walmart Automotive. It took a while for me to really develop a hell of a lot of anger, a lot of resentment towards people in there. Uh, the company, towards the people representing the company. Trying to find a way to get past it sometimes wasn't working for me all that much. It really wasn't. Anybody in that particular department or in that store, I considered persona non grata. And that sucked. There was a lot of decent people I worked over there with that didn't have anything to deal with it. And some people actually did when I thought they were of 
decent folk and discovered they weren't. So now I had to deal with that and reconcile the emotions left and right. If I ever saw them on the streets, like I had to avoid them like the plague because they were. One time, I'm just walking just to get to a bus stop and I met one of them. A guy who never bore me any problems. I liked this guy, I really did. The problem was he was from there. Even though he was out, he was out of the company, I think. But it didn't matter. He was representative of the past, according to according to my brain. And I felt like I had to get the hell away from him. Maybe in other circumstances, I probably would have felt a little bit longer and wanted to talk to the guy, but he was also busy with his own situations. And uh, I wanted to get the hell away from him as much as possible, as much as I liked this guy, and I really respected him a great deal. And he respected me, too. At a place where that was a hard commodity to come by. Politics was set up and you had to pick your own groups to be with or which particular ass to kiss during those days. I guess it's the same thing like every other place that you work at. They always got the damn politics going on. The cliques going on. And sometimes there weren't cliques. There was just people working there trying to make a living and trying to make it decent. You know, trying to make things decent for people. And this guy, I regret the living crap of trying to ignore him and others like him that I cared about. Because they represented, according to my brain, what I want, what I didn't want to deal with anymore. I'm still feeling the stress of it coming up and tightening up in my chest right now, right here. The images, the talking about the memories. It got to a point, like, you know, years after I got away from the company and trying to deal with life on its own terms, that there were places that I couldn't even deal with because of the triggers that they actually had. Worked in a automotive department. We dealt with the tire installation, oil changes, and extra goodies in there. They called it uh, Tire Lumen Express. It's a counter guy. It was a guy processing your stuff. Order up your tires for you. Check the uh, check the water. No, no, not check the water. Um, order up a oil service for you if you need to be. I handled the paperwork and processing. Like a good cashier does. Stock the shelves like crazy. Talk to people about the products I knew nothing about. Except if I heard some good stuff coming from other people, I'd pass it along to other people. I still don't know a damn thing about automobiles. Are you kidding me? I was not mechanically inclined. I was not automotive savvy. I never was. I wanted to stay the hell away from the damn monsters. Long story is what I've told about in my in my logs about how the hell things are going on, but over at Walmart, I hardly ever talked about it because it was one of those sore spots. It still is. Management issues with those guys. Try to be friendly with them. Try to fr be friendly with everybody. Try to do your job, and somehow. I wasn't doing my job. I wasn't doing up to their expectations, despite the fact I was trying to do up to their expectations. And some things, some behaviors came out that uh, were getting to be more and more anti-management. But I was still trying to be customer service friendly. I didn't hold, I didn't try to hold any grief against customers, except I did get heated maybe once or twice really got me involved in the situation that just 
couldn't step I couldn't step away. Despite the fact I had management nearby that could helped out with the situation they just watched. I figured they were gonna get rid of me anyway. So seems like I learned not to trust anybody over here, even with the smiling faces left and right and all the other damn politics. There was no management that was going to be protecting my ass in case anything else went down. That was the hardest damn thing to listen and learn. Sometimes you can't trust people. If you worked with them long enough, you still didn't trust them because they were out there for their own reason, not yours. Not for your protection, but for theirs. Oh, they'll say it, but they don't mean it. I said before, I've been backstabbed too many damn times in my lifetime. Yeah, my videos that I've had managers trying to tell me about this thing or that thing, and I should have been, and I should have been that. Truth of the matter is, maybe techniques could be improved upon, but when it comes down for dealing with people that I trust, I didn't trust anybody over there anymore. At least for those days, anyway. I couldn't trust them. So I had to try to walk as much as I could. You know, try to walk carefully until something else happened. That was a problem right there, wasn't it? How was I supposed to deal with it all? I was trying to find ways of trying to deal and cope with over at uh, Walmart. Do the work as best as I could. Deal with the customers one on one basis. Try not to get any arguments. There was always a way to screw things up left and right. Or walk into a situation where you couldn't get yourself out of it. I discovered that managers are not your friend. Never were. I've had times when managers were somewhat friends, but there was always the lines being crossed left and right, and they had a problem with it because it's their own history at fault. It's their own history that they had to deal with. Dealing and talking with Walmart, I'm, I've got many behaviors happening if you have noticed already the constant digging at the skin I got these white scabs on my skin that I'm trying to scrape off left and right as I try to tell what the stress levels were like over there the manifestations of the PTSD are kicking in to a point where I got a serious issue. Try to scrape this shit off and be meticulous about it. And yet, it's a behavior. It's a way of co trying to cope with the damn thing, but being self-destructive at the same time is like taking a blade and start cutting yourself. I'm using my fingernails and trying to scrape off this damn white crap on my arms. I'd seen it on my mother. I'd seen it on my brother. I just wanted to scrape the living shit out of it. And noticing how my brother's skin was before he passed away, he turned it into damn tissue paper. So if there was any of my actions of the fingernails trying to scrape on the skin and would have torn the skin apart left and right and I'm trying to observe the same thing of mine whether or not I'm going to be turning into that same fashion or not and that's what scares me too I never did like that but the more and more I kept talking about Walmart the more I kept talking about the employees about the building about the management about the day-by-day -day operations, about how I felt and how I was being treated in that place, anything and everything regarding it. It's building up again and again. 
It's not the crying about the thing or mourning or grieving about it, no. It's like either I want to run away from the damn thing or I wanted to find a way to the opposite end, the opposite actions, the stuff that usually puts people with iron bracelets or a straitjacket. One time, trying to get over to the Antelope Valley Mall area just to take care of a few things. Maybe a bit of a, an adventure for myself. And I discovered I had more PTSD flare-ups than anything else going on. And I had not been out there since. And this was like a few years ago. Right after Dave died. It was like months after he died. I was getting stir crazy. I wanted to go out see if there was any bucks. Something out of a bookstore I, I used to be a nut for. But getting past or getting into that area. I can't do that anymore. My family, when we moved out here in 05, we had begun to explore the Antelope Valley in different places, different areas. And memories still linger in this place. And it hurts as hell to deal with those memories. As pleasant as they are, I'm still dealing with the ghosts of my past. And the ghosts of my past are staring right in front of me in pictures. The mourning and grieving of them, my family, my mother and my brother. A lot of areas in the Zanilla Valley I don't think I can get into because of that. Well, because of transportation as well. But Dealing with what the resentments I've got towards a company and anything and everybody re regarding it and relating to it. I had a hard enough time trying to shop out at a damn electronics uh, store. And now i got to bite the bullet on that when I do that on electronics. Because I needed stuff from that. Everything else goes for Amazon. But dealing with the talking about it right now doesn't help me much. I still got the tightness right here. I'm still wound up. A lot of anger, a lot of resentment. I guess, in a way, a lot of hatred. I guess at them and a little bit at me because of it. And I'm still trying to understand. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell happened. I mean, why angry at me? I can understand anger about them. But for me, staying there long enough, I guess, for letting all the damn shit happen and what survival has to come first. You had to pay rent. You had to pay bills. You needed the money. You stayed at a job to get the money. No matter how much you were going to be going through a hell of a lot of grief, you had to go through that. The olden days, the work concept was you worked, period. If you didn't, you were going to work your ass off, regardless. You were going to be stressing out like crazy, but you worked your ass off. Because you had no choice. You had the bills. You had everything else that had to be taken care of first before your own damn needs. It's no wonder how many people kept doing uh, jobless claims and, and worker comp claims, uh, worker comp stress claims out there. Screwed up California so much they had to revise and, and redraft things that you could hardly get a stress claim going. It's possible, but you still need a proof. You need to really prove it on that one. matter if you're developing PTSD from the damn shit or not. If you had medical uh, medical proof on that one, courts would accept that shit. 
But how do you deal with it? I mean, for long periods of time, for 30 years, I've been busting my ass at different places. And yeah, one time I actually did file for job stress. I worked at a company for four years or working behind a register and getting headaches and getting upset stomachs and getting stressed out from all the damn shit, but we needed the money. So situations happen, I get set up, I get fired. I get believed. Was it long enough for these guys to trust me and the trust got betrayed? And I said, fuck them all. They had a resentment towards those people in the, the company and everybody else over there. Maybe one or two people I didn't. The management involved. Yeah, I did. Backstab. Really feeling the backstabbing those days. I struggle. I struggle. year off. I never learned how to work again by that time. Get back out there. I was dealing with my mama and her office needs. At least I know about how to deal with that kind of job stress. I did. And at least they weren't trying to kill me. Not yet anyway. Still Still, I don't think I've ever gotten past that damn thing in the first place. I've talked about it a few times, but it never did get resolved. And there was no way to track these assholes down anyway, so I could just deal and survive, and that was about it. Shit. Kid learns how to, to deal with betrayal and backstabbing. How does that grab you in the workplace? It didn't actually for me. I really didn't. I worked in other places as a temp. Just bust my ass. Or worked in another uh, retail company or didn't feel the backstabbing as much. Worked in an amusement park. I screwed a few times and it got me kicked out, but I didn't have the. Well, actually, during the time I did have to resent my stores. I forget how dare they but then I had to look back at it. I'm like, shit, these guys are royal perfectionists. Yeah, they were. I wasn't up to that caliber, apparently. Dime a dozen. A lot of things. A lot of things regarding the PTSD was building up left and right. No matter how many times I kept trying to do the other jobs and do the best I could, felt like I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't good enough for anybody, I guess. But the only thing I could do is just the best I could, and that was about it. I didn't like it. I felt what the fuck was I supposed to do about it. And then you get one job, damn it, kills you, and it changes your perspective entirely. Yeah. To where nobody in a job is trustworthy. No employer. No co-worker. I couldn't even walk past a damn tire store without having the conniption fits or having the PTSD flare-ups on that one, the anger, the, the frustration, the rage, and the urge to faint. The body wanted to shut itself down. The, bo the brain wanted to shut me down. I get past tires. Tires are all around the damn place here. I got used to the damn smell and realize I'm still safe because they're not going to drop tires on my face. But I go to a tire store and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I stay the hell away from it because I don't want to get nailed by a damn tire. Trying to get a stunt nose kid trying to go up the damn corporate ladder that fucking drives a tire on me without it being safety conscious and he's supposed to be a safety manager. I wasn't even thinking straight and I barely get it band-aid out of the damn whole thing because I was bleeding and couldn't get an urgent care. Actually, I did get an urgent care. The manager drove me to an urgent care. Couldn't drive me to a nearby hospital for for taking care of me? Ooh. Drive me halfway across the valley. 
But I had to do paperwork first while well, bleeding all over the damn place. And then at a medical place, so the bleeding kind of stopped a bit and clotted. Oh, I couldn't find anything. Well, I can't do any x rays. You gotta come back Monday. Motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting pissed at the medical establishment. I don't even know why I took the damn uh, insurance for them in the first place. Legacy, I suppose. Could have picked the cheapest one, ba basically, when I got Medicare, but. Legacy. That's how they operate. So I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with it at all. Still have a problem with it. I'm still dealing with the after effects. I'm still dealing with the honesty of the damn shit. Still don't trust them, any one of them. I've got too much psychological issues right now popping up right even as I talk about it, and it's driving me nuts. Could I stop this damn shit if I could? Maybe. But I don't know how. I talk about the stuff and I, and I start to go after my damn arms. As if maybe I'm trying to scratch or dig at something deep. Punishing myself at the same time. For what? I don't know. It was irritating. Looking at it. Feeling it. Feeling that my skin's got scabbies all over the damn thing and I can't do a damn thing about it except pick at them. Watch them bleed. It's a hell of a thing for me to go through, I'll tell you that much. I haven't had my hair cut in about three or four years. And I got growth happening somewhere. I got skin growth happening. I should have taken care of a long time ago, but I need to get rid of the damn hair. So they can take care of the damn skin. Seems like I'm a guy falling apart. I'm falling apart. Sometimes I understand, and other times I'm wondering why am I going through this shit. I don't have any fucking answers for it. I don't. I don't have any answers for how come I'm tearing myself apart over this damn shit. I'm supposed to talk to a therapist about it today. I hadn't had a dreams about Walmart in a hell of a long while, but I still have the I still have the PTSD effects of it. And if I happen to start thinking about it in any way, shape, or form, if I happen to get triggered by by pictures or by something about it, I'm feeling the effects of it fight, flight, or just tear things apart just for the fun of it. Or tear myself apart. Scrape off every damn white thing that's encrusted on my damn skin. And the thing is, underneath it, it is skin and it is going to bleed. Except I look at it, and I feel it, and I still want to scrape the shit out of it because I don't want it on me. I don't want it on me. But it's part of me. It's it's part of me. And here I am trying to scrape the shit off of me. I can't deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I I have to get rid of it. I don't want anything to deal with it. None of it stressed and frustrated and I feel like yelling and screaming at this damn shit. What the fuck am I doing to myself here? I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing to myself. I don't. I'm trying and I'm not doing so well. 
feel like I'm fucking this up. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. All I know is I know I'm self-destructing at this point. Right in front of my face. Right on camera. Some days I can deal with an emotional roller coaster, other days I can't. But when I get the PTSD flare ups at this point over here, this is fucking me up. I could I could do the blame game. I could do the blame game. But I ain't solving shit. That's not solving a damn thing for me. It's like I want to tear myself apart and not talk to anybody about it. Just get this shit off my damn chest. <sighs> I guess I'm driving myself nuts. My own damn head is trying to drive me insane to a point where I'm going to be digging at myself until... I'm going to be pieces of me all over the damn place and nobody's going to be able to pick up this damn Humpty Dumpty. He didn't have to fall off a damn wall and crack. No, he just smashes himself and picks off the damn pieces while the rest of his yoke is going all over the damn place. And me, I have to have the physical manifestations my mind brings up to the physical body that tell me that either I'm hitting danger zones or... Something else that's going to drive me nuts. I ain't doing so well. See if I can crawl back to bed.